Hello and welcome to my channel where we discuss all things dinosaur and other prehistoric animals. Before we begin, I'm going to just say right up front, please like, share, and subscribe. New fledgling channel. I'm trying to uh, get to 200 subscribers by the end of July, so uh, help me out with that. And uh, enough of the hard sell. It's time to get into it. What you see before us is a uh, another uh, PNSO uh, museum line figure. This is Jiaokin, the uh, Centosaurus, and that will be the last time I say that uh, that name uh, for the uh, the dinosaur because uh, saying Centosaurus is a lot easier than saying uh, Jiaokin. Well, I guess I just said it again, huh? But be that as it may, you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, as I stated, this is a, a museum line figure. PNSO has uh, a few tiers. You've got the museum line, which is uh, the more um, expensive line. They usually uh, come with something other than the uh, model itself and uh, more um, literature as well. So uh, that's what we will have here. You see uh, the illustration, the uh, photo of uh, the Zentosaurus there in the front and uh, looking very nice there with the uh, the colors, which is uh, a uh, unique for uh, PNSO, who uh, usually doesn't go that colorful. So uh, we will see uh, what it looks like. As far as the box, you get nothing really except uh, the museum line right there, Dinosaur Museum, it says that it's 135 scale, scientific art model, and then it's really nothing else, so we will get rid of the box, and uh, I've already uh, opened and uh, removed the uh, contents within, so I can show you what the uh, extra accessory is for uh, the Centaur Source. It came with this uh, this stand, and uh, it's got uh, two peg holes in it. And um, I'm still trying to figure out uh, what's supposed to go in those peg holes. Probably, uh, maybe uh, some kind of uh, the uh, the plastic uh, support stands that usually come with PNSO. But um, the Centaur Source really doesn't need it because it's in a quadru quadrupedal uh, stance. So I guess we'll figure out what this is for somewhere else down the line. As is standard with all of PNSO's museum line models, it also comes with this uh, this uh, folder, if you will, filled with uh, literature and uh, posters. And uh, as always, when we have a museum line, the challenge is: can I open it without ripping it? I was successful with my previous two. Let's see what we got this time. You do it right there on camera so there's no fermentation. If I rip it, I rip it. If not, then another success story. And we have another success story. So we'll pull everything out, lay it down, and set the uh, folder behind. And uh, as always, it comes with a preface that's encased in cellophane. Move that to the side. And uh, the thing that's typical with all of their uh, models, whether it be the museum line or the uh, the prehistoric animal line, PNSO always includes a uh, booklet that um, holds uh, a wealth of information, mostly geared towards children. There go the uh, the names that they give the uh, the dinosaurs, and it's filled with uh, other illustrations too. Beautiful work like that right there this black and white style artwork is just lovely and uh, it's got plenty of uh, literature and uh, more illustrations you can see that it's just absolutely lovely and it just it goes on and on it's just a very nice uh, they give you all kinds of information in there so you, you, you gotta appreciate that it's really nice there of course they give you paper for uh, 
drawing for the, the kids who uh, want to uh, engage in drawing. And then, of course, you get the, uh, the cavalcade of posters. I may have this upside down, so here we go. And it's not necessarily of the species that uh, the uh, model is about. Like right here, this is a solar sore and, uh, you know, a small theropod meat-eating dinosaur. Pretty cool. As always, I won't go through all of these because we could be here all day for that. And you've got this. Pretty nice. Here's a poster of a Centosaurus. Our Centosaurus. It has its name down there. I told you I'm not going to say that name again because I'll end up butchering it at some point. And uh, I like these uh, size comparison uh, posters right here. It's pretty cool. You can see what a Centosaurus' size would be compared to a human and uh, to a Cynoceratops. Pretty cool. Love seeing that. And uh, I was about to say, my second favorite is when they have uh, habitat photos of uh, dinos uh, interacting with one another. So you see, there's a uh, there's a, uh, a tyrannosaur looking in on uh, Centosaurus right there. You've got an ankylosaur and. Uh, it looks like it's a uh, Skeletosaurus, but I could be wrong, but um, yeah, pretty nice. And uh, I'll go through one more and then we'll move on. Look at this. This is uh, pretty uh, pretty awesome right there. You have an, a Hadrosaur family. It's a uh, Lyangosaurus family right there, or herd. Pretty nice. And... Uh, That'll, that'll about do it. Like I said, we could be here all day. You see there's still several posters left. So we will uh, get right into it. So here we have our Centosaurus right in front of us. And uh, the colors are just uh, beautiful here. Normally, uh, PNSO gives us uh, some um, pretty drab colors. And I know drab doesn't sound like a good thing, but um, it's just a descriptive word. Um, I uh, stand by my assertion that uh, large animals aren't uh, colorful, if you will. Um, it's kind of counterproductive to their side, especially if they're predators. Uh, in this case, this is a, 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 a herbivore, it's a hadrosaur, so... Um, um, they're probably, uh, uh, there had to have been certain exceptions, I'm sure. And uh, as far as our model is concerned, this is definitely one as far as our paint apps. Uh, a little bit about Centosaurus. It's from China. It's, uh, it existed in the, uh, the uh, later mid-Cretaceous to late Cretaceous, about 83 to 70 million years ago. Um, I already said that it's in China. It was a, uh, a mid-sized hadrosaur, about tw uh, 27 feet long. They have estimated that it could probably have gotten up to 33, but we know or definitely strongly suspect that, that it averaged around 27 feet. Uh, this model stretches 8.5 inches and 3.75 uh, three and three inches at the top of the crest. So... Uh, Going with the 135 scale, that would make um, this Centosaurus uh, just under 24 feet. So it's not truly 135 scale if you want to consider it as a full grown adult. It would probably be, um, depending on what size range you want to go, anywhere from 130 up to, you know, about 40 in scale. But um, at uh, nearly 24 feet, it's uh, close enough. And uh, I'm still happy with it. It'll still uh, fit in relatively nicely with uh, my 135th scale creatures, uh, meaning the uh, PNSO models. So um, that's a uh, bit about uh, Centosaurus. Let's uh, get up close so we can uh, 
take a view at the highlight, which of course is those crests that they possess. Here we are with our Centosaurus looking uh, close up to the uh, the skull. Something else about Centosaurus, uh, it used to be known as the unicorn dinosaur because the uh, finds were, uh, when they first found uh, this, uh, this animal, the uh, crest wasn't as you see how it is now. It was only a, a portion of the crest, but they didn't know that at the time. It was like the rear portion of the crest and that's where it derived the name of being a unicorn, so to speak. Uh, it wasn't until they found others and they were able to determine that the crest was uh, a bit um, wider than they first thought. So uh, that's why we have what we have now. Um, after they re, uh, uh, repurposed it, I guess, you know, came up with the, uh, the current design, if you will, for the dinosaur. So um, that's uh, how we got to how Centosaurus looks now. Looking at that crest as PNSO has imagined it, it is absolutely beautiful. You see it starts off black around the edges, goes down into an orange and then bleeds into a, a, a yellow while finally ending up in a green, which uh, then tapers off into uh, brownish red color up there at the front there you see the snout looking down you see the the nostrils right there the eyes the, um this animal has uh basically uh just the black eyes right there so that's uh i think that's my first model where i saw that where i didn't have different colored uh pupils from the rest of the eye so looking uh at the color we're going to concentrate more on the color because we've already uh been able to uh, we know uh, how PNSO is when it comes to their attention to detail with the uh, folds, wrinkles, and the scalation and stuff. So uh, we're going to really uh, take a uh, look at the uh, the color of the animal. So I'm going to uh, zoom out a bit so we can actually get that color in. So as you can see there, looking at uh, the Centosaurus uh, having their, having him backed up a little bit. You've got the striping that starts right there at the uh, where the uh, skull meets the uh, neck, and that striping goes all the way and tapers to the end of the tail there. So uh, yeah, it's just a beautiful. Uh, I love the colors. It's uh, like a uh, a, a a yellowish uh, color in between the uh, the dark brown stripes. And then it uh, washes into a green and then back into that uh, mustard yellow, if you will, for the underbelly. You've got the greens on the, uh, the legs and uh, the back of those legs. You've got that yellow there looking pretty nice. Looking at the other side real quick. It all extends there and... Uh, even though I said I wasn't going to mention it, you can see the, the, the stretches and the fold and the wrinkles. you got to give PNSO their props when it comes to that. You've got the scoots along the back there and uh, very fine scalation. I'd have to come up close for you guys to try to see that. But uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Looking at the bottom there for the, uh, the butthole check and... Uh, it's there, but they didn't really emphasize it. It's back there somewhere, but uh, there it is. Pretty nice. And uh, you see that it's got the, uh, it's got the, uh, the, the, it's left foreleg raised up as it's in a semi walking pose. And uh, you've got uh, nice attention to detail with the, uh, the toes. See if you can see that right there without me getting too blurred out. Set our ten centosaurus down, and uh, yes, very beautifully painted model, and uh, a nice addition to uh, the hadrosaur family portion of my collection. Doing some comparisons with a uh, couple of the uh, latest ornithopods that I uh, added to my collection. You've got the Centosaurus side by side with Harvey the Iguanodon and uh, they uh, they look they look pretty nice together. Can't front about that. 
Next up, we have our Centosaurus uh, lined up with our first PNSO tripod dinosaur. We've got already the uh, Olora Titan. So yeah, we've got uh, a couple of uh, hadrosaurs here with uh, some beautiful crests and from different parts of the world. Centosaurus from China and uh, Olora Titan from Far East Russia and some parts of China, by the way. And even though this wasn't the Tyrannosaur that was around the time of the Centosaurus or the place, had to uh, match him up next to uh, the resident big bad himself, Wilson, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And uh, yeah, they uh, look great together. Um, it probably would have been better served if I had a Tarbosaurus up there. But uh, the Tarbosaurus is uh, just a little bit smaller than uh, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. So you you get some type of idea of how they would scale. So my final thoughts on uh, Xiao Qin, the Centosaurus. I said it again. I figured I got to get it, the name in one last time before uh, closing out this review. So that was the attempt. Uh, very beautiful model. Um, it's kind of undersized for a uh, museum line. It should have been a little bit bigger. Should have been uh, representative of a full-size animal, especially at the uh, the higher price point, which is. Uh, just under $60. Once again, it's a museum line product and they are priced a little bit higher, but you're supposed to get more. It, uh, the only accessory it came with was uh, a stand that uh, I still have no idea um, what it's for. I guess it's for the Centosaurus and those pegs are, if you wanted to use the stand for um, their animals, such as the marine animals, you could put um, a couple pegs into those holes and then you could display a marine animal like a Basilosaurus or something like that if you wanted to a Chronosaurus uh, which PNSO has uh, they have models of those kind I don't have any of the marine animals uh, not uh, not that I'm uh, not interested it's just that uh, uh, I'm more of a uh, dinosaur guy especially since um, I like doing uh, landscape style dioramas as you can clearly see here. But um, anyhow, as far as our Centosaurus, the uh, paint apps are beautiful. It's a step away from what we're used to with PNSO, who usually gives us kind of plain and drab colors. But this animal is uh, very colorful, especially that crest. The skull is the uh, definite highlight of this this model and uh, very, very nice. and. Uh, yeah, I am, I'm glad that I have it, and uh, it will make a wonderful addition to the Hadrosaur family. That'll do it uh, for this review. Please like, share, and subscribe once again. I'm trying to uh, get to uh, 200 subscribers by the end of this month, month being July 2022. And... Uh, It'd be nice if you all could help me out. If you want to be uh, notified for the next time I upload a video, please hit the bell and that will happen. And please, please leave comments below. Tell me what you think about uh, the review, about the animal itself, and uh, any other uh, comments or concerns you might have. So uh, I'll uh, let you take one last look at our Centosaurus as uh, we bow out. Thank you and take care.